everyone. Here is today's specimen. And I'll put up our first polling question here. So what type of specimen is this? Okay, so I'm going to end the polling there and share the results with you all. So it looks like most people picked B. Unfortunately, that's not the correct answer. The correct answer is actually an adrenalectomy specimen. So we have our adrenal gland here. You can see it with kind of that yellowy appearance. And then all of this fat that's attached to it is all of the periadrenal soft tissue. So the adrenal glands are two small endocrine glands located above each kidney. They are responsible for the release of hormones that regulate metabolism, immune system function, salt water balance in the bloodstream, and also aid in the body's response to stress. The normal weight per gland is about four to six grams. And a way to tell the left gland from the right gland is by the shape. So the left gland is typically more crescent shaped, which you can see on the PowerPoint there. And then the right gland is more pyramidal shaped. However, this can become skewed when we have different types of masses and things like that. So it can be still difficult to distinguish these glands. So now I'll put up our next polling question here. So which layer of the adrenal cortex produces glucocorticoids? Okay, so I'm going to end the polling there and share the results. So it looks like there's a tie between A and B. So the correct answer is actually B, zona fasciculata. So the outside of the adrenal gland is the capsule. Then the next layer is the cortex, which is usually about two millimeters thick and typically a golden yellow color. And the adrenal cortex has three layers. So the zona glomerulosa, which is the outside layer, which produces mineralocorticoids. Then the zona fasciculata, which produces glucocorticoids. Then the zona reticularis, which is the inner layer, which produces androgens. The innermost layer of the adrenal gland is the medulla, and this is typically more of a red-brown color. And the adrenal medulla synthesizes and secretes catecholamines. So now we'll go through a few differential diagnoses for why we could be potentially getting an adrenalectomy specimen. So first we'll talk about adrenal adenoma. This is a benign neoplasm arising from adrenal cortical cells. It's the most common adrenal tumor. It's more common in women versus males and more common in adults. And it typically presents in the fifth to seventh decade. And it can either be non-functional or functional. So non-functional accounts for about 90%. And it's most commonly found incidentally on imaging. And that's why it's been coined the name incidentaloma. Functional can be aldosterone producing, which is associated with Kahn syndrome, or cholesterol producing, which is associated with Cushing syndrome. So now we'll go into the gross features for this. So typically, the gross features are that it's unilateral, solitary, golden yellow, the weight is typically less than 50 grams, and the size is less than five centimeters. So you can see on the image there that homogeneous yellow mass there. So now we'll go into talk about adrenal cortical carcinoma. This is the most common primary malignancy of the adrenal gland. It arises from the adrenal cortical cells. It's more common in females versus males. And the mean age is about 55, but can occur at any age. About 50% are functional and 50% are non-functional. So patients with functional typically have symptoms related to the hormone production. And then patients with non-functional typically present with either a mass effect, so GI system issues, organ compression, or back pain. Or it can be discovered incidentally during unrelated imaging. 
90% of these cases are sporadic and risk factors include smoking. And I'll put up our next polling question here. So which of the following genetic syndromes is not associated with an adrenal cortical carcinoma? Okay, so I'll end the polling there and share the results. So it looks like there's a tie between A and C. So the correct answer is C. So von Hippel-Lindau. So this syndrome is associated with a different type of adrenal tumor called a pheochromocytoma. And all of the other syndromes also have an increased risk for adrenal cortical carcinomas. So MEN1, Lynch, uh, Lee Fermini, Beckman Weedman, APC, neural fibromatosis type 1, congenital adrenal hyperplasia would all have increased risk factors for adrenal cortical carcinoma. So, gross features for adrenal cortical carcinoma so, they're typically solitary, bulky, and yellow, tan or red brown masses. They typically have areas of necrosis and hemorrhage which you can see on the image there with all that hemorrhage. The average tumor size is about 10 to 12 centimeters, and these masses tend to be over 100 grams. So now we're going to talk about pheochromocytomas. So this one arises from the adrenal medulla composed of chromaffin cells that produce catecholamines. Patients typically present with hypertension, and a classic triad of episodic headaches, sweating, and tachycardia. The incidence is equal between men and women. Most are spermatic and present within the fourth to fifth decades. Approximately 30% are hereditary, and most are associated with von Hippel-Lindau syndrome, which we mentioned earlier, men too, and neurofibromatosis type 1. And now I'll put up our next polling question here. So the 10% rule for pheochromocytomas includes all of the following except. Okay, and I'm going to end the polling there and share the results. So great job, everyone. Yes, it is B, 10% unilateral. So it's actually 10% are bilateral. So the 10% rule states that 10% are bilateral, 10% are extra adrenal, 10% are in children, and 10% are malignant. So for gross features for the FIOs, they're typically well circumscribed. The cut surfaces are typically pink, tan, to yellow, to brown and their size typically ranges from about four to 6.5 centimeters in greatest dimension. So now after going through all of those differential diagnoses, let's take a look at our specimen today. So it's pretty small, and you can see that there is a nodule here. So our case today is out for an adrenal cortical adenoma. So now we'll go into how to open slash fresh these specimens. So for our case, it was very small, so we didn't have to make any fixation cuts into it. But sometimes these specimens can be a lot larger, like the one shown on the image in the PowerPoint there. You can see how big these can get. And then in those cases, we'd be wanting to ink our resection margin and then make a few fixation cuts through. So you can see that first one, we made two fixation cuts. And then that second one there, we made one fixation cut through the mass. And just for interest sake, these two are out for pheochromocytomas on the PowerPoint slides there. So now we'll go through the grossing and go through the grossing steps, which would be the same for any of these different types of pathologies. So we'll identify our specimen, our main findings, additional findings, ink code, and section code. So our specimen, like we mentioned before, it's an adrenalectomy specimen. So this would include the adrenal gland, 
and as well attach periadrenal soft tissue. And we'll wanna state if it's intact, disrupted, or morselated. We'll also be giving measurements. So we wanna give measurements in three dimensions of the adrenal gland itself. And then also with a measurement of the attached periadrenal soft tissue. We'd also be giving the weight trimmed. So this weight would be the weight of just the adrenal gland and the mass with the periadrenal soft tissue trimmed off. So an accurate weight for adrenal neoplasms is very important. Although weight cannot be used as the sole criteria for malignancy, adrenal cortical neoplasms weighing less than 50 grams are almost always benign versus malignant tumors are typically greater than 100 grams. So now you might be wondering how we get this weight with it trimmed. And there are a few different ways to do this. But most importantly, we don't want to cut off the fat before we section through the specimen because we could potentially cut off an area of tumor extension into that soft tissue. And this will be very important for staging. So one way to do this is I have some images shown here. So I've inked my resection margin and then I've serially sectioned my entire specimen so I can really see where that mass is in relationship to the resection margin as well as to the soft tissue. And then I've removed all of the soft tissue and put it in a pile there shown with the red arrow. And then I've taken the weight of just the adrenal gland and the mass. That would be the 34.4 grams. Another way to do this would be taking the weight of the specimen at the beginning with everything left on and then trimming the fat off again the same way and then just taking the weight of the fat and minusing it from that overall weight. So our main findings will be describing the lesion. So we'll want to describe the size, appearance, location. So if it's located within the medulla or the cortex. So the top image there is showing a pheochromocytoma. So that one is arising from the medulla. So you can see that its epicenter is located within the medulla. Versus the bottom image there, that is an adrenal cortical adenoma which is arising from the cortex. So you can see that the epicenter there is within the cortex, that yellow area of the adrenal gland there. And then that central area is the medulla. That's more of that red-brown color. We'll also be wanting to mention if there's any invasion into the periadrenal adipose tissue and then the distance to the margin. Additional findings will be describing the uninvolved adrenal cortex and medulla so the color, uniformity, if there's any presence of nodules or not. So you can see some nodules on the PowerPoint image there. And then we'll also be describing if we found any lymph nodes, so we'd give their number and size. Our ink code is black for the periadrenal soft tissue resection margin. And then our section. So if the lesion is small, so about less than two centimeters, we'd submit the entire lesion. So for our case here, it's pretty small, so we'd definitely be submitting this entire lesion. If the lesion was larger, so greater than two centimeters, we would do representative sections, at least one section per greatest dimension of the lesion. And we wanna include sections with the lesion showing the resection margin, so a section like that. And then the lesion with adjacent uninvolved adrenal gland, so something like that. And then also a section showing the lesion with extension into the soft tissue if present. So something like that. So even if it's not going into that soft tissue, we still want to give a section just showing that relationship to make sure that there's no microscopic invasion. We'd also be wanting to give two sections of the adrenal gland away from the tumor. And here is a sample gross description of a case that I grossed earlier this year for an adrenal cortical adenoma. So the first paragraph there is stating what the specimen is. So we have, you can see the intact adrenal gland, and then we did the weight trimmed, and then the attached periadrenal soft tissue. Our second paragraph there will be all of our main findings. So the cut surface shows a well-circumscribed solid yellow-orange dash mass located within the cortex of the adrenal gland. And then I gave the measurement to the soft tissue resection margin 
and said that the mass was confined to the adrenal gland. My next paragraph there will be the additional findings, so describing the background adrenal gland. And for this case, we did find a possible lymph node. And then my ink code and my section code. So for this one, because that mass was pretty small, the largest measurement being 2.3, I did submit it entirely. And then I submitted the two sections of uninvolved adrenal gland and then that possible lymph node entirely. So now to round off our talk about adrenal glands, we'll talk about staging for adrenal cortical carcinomas. And I'll put up our next polling question here. So what PT stage is an adrenal cortical carcinoma that invades into the vena cava? Okay, so I'm going to end the polling there and share the results. Yes, so it is a PT4. So now we'll go through the different staging. So for the PT stage for adrenal cortical carcinomas, T1 is a tumor that is less than or equal to five centimeters in greatest dimension with no extra adrenal invasion. T2 is when that tumor is greater than five centimeters, but again, with no extra adrenal invasion. T3 is then when that tumor is any size and there is local invasion. So that would be when it would be invading into the periadrenal soft tissue. And then T4 is a tumor of any size that invades into adjacent organs or larger blood vessels. So that would include the renal vein or vena cava. And so the image there on the PowerPoint is showing a T4 tumor, and it's actually invading into the liver. So that red arrow there is showing where the liver is, and the tumor is invading into it. So distinguishing adrenal cortical adenomas from adrenal cortical carcinomas can be difficult. Size can be a good indication for malignancy. As we mentioned earlier, malignant tumors are usually greater than 100 grams. The Y score is a common system used for histopathologic reporting to diagnose benign and malignant adrenal tumors. The Y score is based on the presence or absence of specific histologic criteria, such as high mitotic rate, atypical mitosis, necrosis, capsular invasion, etc. So the presence of three or more of these criteria indicates malignant behavior. Adrenal cortical carcinomas overall have a very poor prognosis. The five-year mortality is about 50 to 90%. And the tumor stage is the best prognostic factor. So a worse tumor stage means a worse prognosis. So for malignant pheochromocytomas, like we mentioned earlier, the malignant ones only comprise about 10% of all pheochromocytomas. And there's no single histologic feature or biomarker that reliably predicts malignancy. Larger and heavier tumors are more likely to be malignant. And the PASS provides prognosis based on certain histologic features. So this would include number of mitoses, tumor necrosis, and spindle cell morphology, etc. So a score of four or more is concerning for malignancy. Overall, metastatic disease is the most reliable evidence for malignancy. I just want to thank everyone for attending all of these sessions. Thank you all.